The other day I needed to build a title card for my Photo Justice Photo Moment show, and it was a show on doing the uh, the animation inside of a Lumix camera where you can do a frame by frame stop motion animation setup. And for the, the hero image, the card image if you will, I wanted to have something that represented the onion skinning, where you see the image that you're shooting as well as two images before it. And I was doing this just with my iPad. I had my, my GH5 at home and I had my iPad and I thought, okay, how am I going to represent this? And the obvious thing would be to have multiple layers of the same image slightly move so you see multiple steps of that image. And, and that's what I did. So this is the title card. That's what it ended up looking like. And I needed to create this just with my iPad, no Photoshop. I thought, okay, well, that, that's pretty easy. You know, there's, there's Photoshop has uh, Photoshop Mix, which allows you to do things like that. And I started working on it in Mix, and um, it sent it off to Photoshop Touch, I think, for some retouching. There was a little hair or something on that I wanted to get rid of. And then I, I went into uh, to, uh, uh, Snapseed to play around and make a kind of a look on it. And I realized when I was in Snapseed that it would have been easier to do the whole thing here. So I started over just for fun, just to see what I could do in here. And it was so simple and so cool that that's what I wanted to show you guys. So first of all, here's the picture. So there's picture one, picture two, and picture three. So these are all just taken, camera locked down. It was even on a tripod. It was actually just sitting on the table. And the uh, the light, the under light that's coming up underneath the Lego character there is actually my iPad screen. So I set the iPad to a white web page, underlit him, underlit the little character. The background is just a cardboard box and I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's all out of focus. But this, it was a super, super simple on my dining room table late at night kind of a setup. Okay, so I need to take these images and composite them together so that I get that little onion skinning effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this into Snapseed. So let's fire up Snapseed here. And I'm gonna open the first of those three images. I don't think it really matters which one goes first, but we'll grab this one first. And I, there is a little hair here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and retouch this hair now, although I think when I did this before, I think I did it later, but that let's just get rid of it. So we'll go in here into the tuning area, and uh, let's see here. Healing is what I want, and then zoom in nice and close. And remember, with Snapseed, you don't adjust the brush size. You simply adjust the, um, the zoom level, and the brush size stays the same, but it's get bigger or smaller relative to your image. So let's just get rid of a couple spots, although I really don't think it matters at this point. But but it's there. Okay. Hit the check mark. Okay, that's great. All right, next one, this is where this really happens, is under double exposure. So at the bottom of filters, double exposure. We put that on and choose an image. And we'll go to my moments here and choose the second image. And it pops it on. And you know what? That was it. Like, that was it. I mean, there's other things that I could do. I could go into these different modes and try different things. But frankly, the default one just worked. Okay, so that's great. Let's hit OK on that one. And let's do it one more time. Same thing, double exposure, open an image, add the third one in there. So let's go in there and grab the third one. And fantastic, I'm loving it. <laughs> Absolutely loving it. Now here we can see that hair showing up again. So yeah, and it showed up in a couple more places. So let's just do a quick little retouch in there again. And I think that's what I did last time was all the retouching was done at the end. So again, get in nice and close and just draw that. I'm just using my finger here. If I had my Apple Pencil handy, it'd be a little bit more accurate, but this is certainly good enough for what I'm doing here. But the final size is not going to be that big. So, all right, so that's cool. Looking pretty good there. Looking pretty good. Now maybe we want to add a little bit more of a look to it. I don't know. Do we want to kind of spruce it up a little bit more? So we go into Tune Image and uh, let's see here. Let's take the brightness up a little bit here. Take that whole thing a little bit brighter, maybe a little more contrast. Oh, that's cool. I like the contrast in there. Saturation, do I want to bring that up or down? I'm not even sure. Let's do that a little bit. Okay, that's, yeah, that's cool. I like it like that. Now, it's funny because I'm not seeing, oops, I'm not seeing here a problem that I had before where this area up in the corner here had gotten really quite crunchy. I mean, you can kind of see it a little bit. I'm going to bring the brightness up on my own screen here. You can kind of see it a little bit, but before when I'd done it, I don't know what was different, honestly, but there was a lot more noise crunchiness happening that I wasn't happy with. So, well, that's easy enough to fix. You just add digital noise or green to the image. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna proceed as if they were, it was there because it was on the other one. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know why it's not there now, but let's just pretend that it's there. So let's go back in here, and I'll go back into my effects, and I'm going to grab grainy film, and... I mean, the default setting that looks great. I love that. Uh, but I don't really want the green all over the character. It's really just the corner 
the top left corner that I'm worried about because I can bring the green way up and that's obviously too high. Bring it all the way down, that's not enough, not enough. So let's go kind of there-ish, but I'm only gonna want it in that corner. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll put it over the whole thing, just not over the Lego guy. I don't know, let's find out. Let's, I'll hit the check mark to hit okay. And then top right corner, the stack of uh, little rectangles with the curved arrow, we tap that and then in the middle of that view edits. And now I can go into my grainy film, bring up the brush, and right by default, it has inverted the mask. So if I just drag my finger over to paint it, you can see that's what's being painted in there. I can flip that around the opposite direction. It's not actually what I want. So let's decrease that back down to zero and just erase this. There's no undoing here, which is really kind of weird. Let's just get rid of all of that. And we can view the mask at any time. Just tap the mask button, nothing's happening. So it's not there. So now I want a really big, let's go back up. Let's go to like 75%. I want a really big mask over this area here, right? That's where I want it. But I don't want to be painting in here and trying to paint around the guy there and trying to be accurate because you know, that's never, never going to be accurate enough. So let me <laughs> redo this again with zero, just kind of paint that back into zero, get rid of that guy in there. Okay. So let's go back to 75. And the way that I'm going to do it, because I can't change my brush size is again, to make my image smaller or bigger. Now that's the smallest that I can get right there. So as I bring my finger in, and you don't even see the brush right now, but as I kind of bring my finger in gently, you can see that I'm brushing in, if I mask that in, a very big soft mask over there. And I'll do it on the other side as well. Kind of like so. Maybe need a little bit across the top there to kind of even it out. Looking pretty good. Dig it. I like it. It's maybe just a little bit more. Just get a little bit more on the sides in there. Okay. I'm going to call that good enough. You might want to, now, now I'm getting picky. Just got a little bit more in there. Okay, so now, now we're good. I like this. All right. Check mark. Okay. I'm going to call this done. I'm happy with this. So now let's get out of this mode and I'm just going to save this. I'm going to save a copy of it. I could overwrite it, but I'm going to save a copy so that I have all three original pictures still there. And then, and that's really just a backup. And, and this is one of those things I like to do is even though from here, Ideally, I want to just send this to the next app. I don't want to save it to the camera roll and then open the other app and then go find it in the camera roll. I just want to send it. It doesn't always work. Some apps receive properly, some don't. It's some you can't even send to. I never figured this out. But in a state like this, I would usually just save it as kind of a, a backup, um, just like any other system. You just save before you move on. So that's what I've done. I've saved it. But now I'm going to go ahead and do a share. Uh, it's actually not share. I'm going to go open in and it's going to go through the whole process of rendering out that image. And the app that I want is uh, Photoshop Mix. Right there, it is there, okay. Sometimes it doesn't show up and then you have to go to more and, and open another app, just kind of depends on where you are. It's so weird the way the whole thing works, but import into Photoshop Mix. So this is where I will do my graphics, my overlay graphics to, um, uh, to, to do the photo moment thing. So I gotta have a little photo moment badge. I needed to create the whole thing here. Also at this point, even if, let's say I wasn't even going to do the photo moment badge, but I'm using this to upload to YouTube as my title card. If I just took the file as it was saved right now, that is a 20 megapixel file. And if I try to upload that to YouTube, it's going to say, eh, I can't do it. So I'm going to size it down. But for a thumbnail, I just want a 1920 by 1080. And I used to have to use a different app entirely, an app dedicated for that. But now Photoshop Mix allows me to scale my images. So we're going to do that. I'm actually going to do this first incorrectly. So you can see what happens if I don't scale it and then we'll bring in the thing to scale it. So let's uh, add a new layer. So I'm, I'm, I'm in Photoshop Mix now. Over on the right hand side, you see a thumbnail, the layer that I've got, the little plus above that I hit that. We'll say add new image layer. I keep these, these uh, little uh, graphics that I need on Dropbox. So I go over to my Dropbox and just quickly find that. There's so much stuff in my Dropbox here, but there we go. And I think this is the right one. There we go. Okay, so the one that I want is the photo moment in second one over, so I'm gonna grab that. It drops it in, but you can see there, it's the wrong size, right? That photo moment badge is scaled to 1920 by 1080. Now I could scale this up, but of course if I scale it up, you see at the top, the size of this, the layer and the source size, is just gonna render out not nice. So that's, that's no good, all right? So let's just delete this layer entirely. And I'm gonna go down in the bottom left where it says crop, go into the crop tool, and then there's a new option that says custom. So we're talking, what is this? Fourth icon over from the right. <laughs> Notification is going crazy. Let's hide that. Uh, coming over from or from the left, rather, there's the X and then it says rotate, flip horizontal, flip vertical, and then custom. So I hit custom and I can type in a size. So I'm going to type in 1920 by 1080. Hit OK. 
And that is made in 1920 by 1080 canvas, but you notice that the image has zoomed in to, to fill it at 100%. But that's fine. I can go ahead and hit the checkbox to just kind of hit OK on my canvas there. And now I can resize my image and I can make that fit. So I can, I can easily snap this into the corners. It just snaps in very nicely. Drag the image out to size, and there we go. And notice as I'm doing this, if you look in the top left corner, it shows the source size, so that was the original image, and then the layer size. And of course, once that snaps in, it's 1920 by 1080. I don't know why I said 1917. That was just weird. Let's go back to the cropping and make sure that my canvas is actually that size. It is. Okay, I'm not quite sure why it said. There we go, canvas 1920 by 1080. And uh, let's try that again. Scales up. Huh, I don't know where that 1917 is coming from. That's weird. Well, I'm going to go just ever so slightly bigger just to make sure that it's not clipping, I'm not getting a white path anywhere. How bizarre. The things that happen. Okay, so now let's hit the little plus sign again above the layer, add new image layer. I'm going to go back and find that same guy. There's my photo moment badge. It drops it in, and away we go. And at this point, I actually, actually let's leave that one alone. I could actually go to this other layer and move that around a little bit and kind of reposition so maybe I don't want to crop his leg off or you know, whatever it might be. So... There we go. Okay, so now I can save it. So now we just go to our camera roll, saving, and that will be saved out at the right size. And now, of course, I've got something that is ready to upload to YouTube or whatever I'm doing. So it's just, it's really fun and cool that you can do these simple composite things inside of Snapseed. The retouching is all there, color grading, adding the noise to hide any, well, to add an effect or to hide any uh, choppy stuff that came in. And then to bring that into Photoshop Mix and do the scaling and add the graphic on top of it, Overall, it's just one of those things that I think is really remarkable what you can do on your iPad.